Today, we're making homemade wine from a wine kit. We've chosen a Vineco Sangiovese, a full-bodied Italian red wine that is the main component of Chianti. We usually make wine from fresh fruit or juice, so we have some experience. But for this wine kit, we intend to follow the manufacturer's instructions exactly, as if we have no experience. Drop the device. Get away from that keyboard. Step outside. Into Shred World. Inside the box, we found oak chips, a second packet, including the instructions, and a bladder full of juice. The instruction packet contains some other things we'll need. There is Chittison, a clearing agent, the instruction booklet, a packet of yeast, a packet of kiesel salt, which is also a clearing agent, potassium sulfate and sorbate, and bentonite. The outside of the box has a list of equipment needed. We will be fermenting in this 9-gallon fiberglass fermentation tub. We'll be using a 6-gallon glass carboy along with a fermentation lock. We'll use an auto siphon and tubing for racking. We have a glass hydrometer to measure specific gravity. A kitchen thermometer will tell us the temperature of our must. And we have a large spoon on hand for mixing and stirring. We thoroughly rinsed, washed, and re-rinsed all of the equipment we will use. And then we sanitized it with star sand. We mixed one ounce of star sand with five gallons of water in the fermentation tub and then soaked, wiped, or sprayed all of the equipment. After at least a minute of contact, we removed the equipment and let it air dry completely. We allowed all equipment, especially the fermentation tub, to reach room temperature. And then we poured in eight cups of hot water. We stirred in the contents of the bentonite packet and mixed well. Bentonite is a clay product that clarifies wine by removing haze particles. We used a can opener to open the juice bladder, but we kept the bladder in the kit box until it was almost empty to make it easier to manage.
we rinsed the juice bladder twice and added to the fermentation tank. Then we added additional water to make the volume in the tank 6 gallons. We added and stirred in the oat chips. We wish we had waited until after the next step because the next step is to read the starting specific gravity. But the oak chips in the mixture made it a little difficult to read. But our starting specific gravity was 1.1. We next sprinkled the yeast on top. We did not mix it in. This is a low foaming, fast fermenting yeast. It quickly disappeared into the juice. The fermentation tub was set up in an area with a constant temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit. We placed the lid and a fermentation lock half filled with sulfite solution. The sulfite solution is potassium metabisulfite powder dissolved in water. By days three and four, you could see the fermentation bubbles and you could smell the yeast. By day five, the must temperature is 76 degrees Fahrenheit and the specific gravity is already down to 1.040. Between days six and 10, the specific gravity got progressively lower. By day 14, the specific gravity was down to 0.996, which is within the range we're looking for. It's time to transfer the wine from the fermentation tub to a six gallon carboy. Once racking was complete, we added the packet containing the potassium metabisulfite, potassium sorbate, and stirred it in. Then we degassed the wine by stirring vigorously with a spoon. They make grill attachments to make this process faster and easier, and next time, that's what we'll use. As recommended by the instructions, we tasted and tested the wine to make sure that all fizziness was gone. Then we added the Kiesel salt, which is another clearing, fining agent. We placed an airlock, half filled with sulfite solution, and waited for 24 hours. It's been a full day since we added potassium metabisulfite, potassium sorbate to our wine. And now it's time to add the last packet, chitosan. Chitosan is a sugar derived from the skeletons of shellfish. It helps to clear the wine by removing particles and also inhibits additional fermentation. We'll stir it in and let the wine sit for another five days.
At day 20, we gave the carboy a twist to allow sediment collected on the sides of the carboy to fall to the bottom. On day 28, we checked the wine to see if it was clear. It was. We will be racking from a 6-gallon carboy to a 5-gallon carboy. We added about a quarter of a teaspoon of potassium metabisulfite powder to the 5-gallon carboy because we intend to let this wine age for about 3 months. The sediment left behind is called lees, and it's why we rack. It's mostly dead yeast cells. The five gallon carboy of wine was transferred to the cellar, fitted with a solid stopper, labeled, and covered with a trash bag to keep the light away. Making wine from a wine kit is a fairly straightforward process. If you carefully follow the directions, it's hard to go wrong. This wine, while still very young, tastes good now, but we plan on bulk aging it for about three months, and it should taste even better then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like by hitting the thumbs up button down below. And while you're there, why not subscribe?